Well hello it's Andrew here again and this is episode 142 and we're continuing in our little exploration of Matthew's Gospel and today we're at chapter 19 verses 13 through to 15. Then little children were brought to Jesus in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them but Jesus said let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he's laid his hands on them and went on his way. It would seem that helicopter parenting is not a um, just a modern phenomenon. You know what I mean by that? Uh, it drives school teachers nuts when parents are always hovering around always seeking to advocate for their kids, always seeking for the kids best advantage, always making sure that the kids get the very best of everything and don't let the job of teaching effectively in the end to the school teachers. Um, it's not a new phenomenon and we see it here. We see it parents who are seeking every advantage for their children to seeking to get the very best for them and they are wanting to strike gold and who can blame them who can blame them and so we see them presumably as their parents bringing their little children to Jesus for Jesus to pray over them and to bless them hmm it's worth thinking about isn't it making investment in the most vulnerable and the youngest and the children among us. I read a book some years ago um, by a child psychiatrist by the name of Bruce Perry and the book was called The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog. <laughs> it is a horrendous title and it's a collection of stories of things that actually happened, of uh, encounters he had, has had through his, uh, through his practice up until that point where he looks at exceptional cases and the consequences of inadequate care for children, inadequate concern for children, inadequate looking after and nurturing and loving children, particularly in their first two years. He stresses the importance of the first two years, first year in particular, but the first two years in a child's life in terms of setting it up. For, um, for what happens next. And I um, just, I've got two mokapuna, two, uh, two grandchildren. And uh, they have the gift of having the most amazing mother in the world. Mel, our daughter in law, is just amazing. Amazing with these kids. She's a school teacher, primary school teacher. So she knows about all the child development stuff. But she's just an amazing mum. And I know that. These kids are getting a great start in life. She's there for them and with them and she's just she's just wonderful in the way that she handles them. The eldest one, he was born nine weeks early, so he had quite a challenge, but doing really well. He's just started school this year. And you can see the real benefits of great parenting and the way that uh, the kids can develop. Parents, adults who are committed to the development and the wholeness of children. One of my best friends is uh, a teacher in a school for children with specific learning disabilities. And as I listen to her talking about the challenges that these kids face and recognizing the investment that she and the school, which is a little school that she's uh, part of, one, I think it's pretty well unique. It's the Gene Seabrook Memorial School here in Christchurch. The um, effort that they put into making a difference in these kids' lives, and it truly is staggering um, that our education system largely ignores the challenges that these children face wanting to make sure that they get a good chance at life. And so here we see these parents, these helicopter parents, wanting to do the best for their kids, to see that they, they get a good, a good start, every advantage that they can. 
you know, I want to suggest that uh, what Jesus is saying here is not just about children. It's about being childlike. Not childish, because we all know what childish behavior looks like. It's about being childlike. And it's pointing to a deep spiritual truth that unless we come with something of the attitude of little children, something of the heart of little children, we cannot fully enter or experience what it means to be part of, of the kingdom. It's about recognizing and being aware of our ultimate powerlessness, about our dependence upon God, about our need for God. We live in a world where we're taught that uh, autonomy is everything, that we are self-actualized human beings that uh, need to be able to be independent and stand on our own feet. And there's a measure of truth in that. And yet I believe and I've experienced it's actually as we recognize our deep need of God, our deep need of that relationship where our security is grounded, that we're able to live with that measure of freedom and independence. It's about a willingness to trust, to trust that God's purposes for us are good, that God is for us and not against us, that God's desire and yearning for us is to live the richest and fullest that we can be. I'm come, my, one of my favorite verses, he says, that you might have life and have it in all its fullness. And that we come to recognize that that is in fact true, that allows us to be open and vulnerable, particularly with the Lord, so that we're able to experience the richness because we trust him in the times of trial and difficulty. And it means that we don't need to strut about proving ourselves to anybody or anything. We can simply be ourselves because we are enough as we are. And the Lord accepts us as we are. We don't need to scrub up before we come to him. <laughs> There's no point anyway because the only person we're falling at that point is, the, is, is ourselves. And so this is the one who accepts us, just like children know that they are accepted when they are totally and fully loved. And so we see Jesus welcoming the children and their parents, presumably as their parents. And we see him taking what might appear to us to be an unnecessary action. He lays his hands upon them. And he prays for them. This is an action of blessing. An, ex an action where Jesus imparts a blessing upon the children who are brought, to, are brought to him. And I kind of think, how often do we do that? How often do we take opportunity to really bless our children and to seek blessing for them in this kind of way? Not just helicoptering for them at school, but in terms of a, a spiritual sense of just desiring their best, that they grow to be the, the men and women that the Lord would have for them. Our desire needs to be always for their highest and for their best. As a little aside, I've wondered what happened to those children. I wondered what happened as a result of the Lord laying his hands upon them and praying for them. I imagine that their lives might have taken quite a different trajectory and they might not have even known why. They have been too young to remember, but to have his hands upon them. And for us today to open our lives to his blessing, to his hand, in a sense, upon us, that we might be open to all that 
he has for us and for our children. Anyway. Well, may God indeed bless you today and every day he gives you. Amen. Um.